In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bivariate choropleth map, where we essentially take two choropleth maps and then put them on top of each other to compare the distribution of one variable to the distribution of another. So to start with, I've got some U.S. counties here, and if I go to properties and then symbology for that layer and go to quantities, I can start building a choropleth map under graduated colors. The theme of my bivariate map is going to be age distribution within the United States, and so I'd like to make one map layer that shows the distribution of young people within the United States, and the other that shows the distribution of elderly people. I've made a column way down at the end of my attribute table that's totaling the number of youth within each one of these counties, and that's a total of the age under 5, the age between 5 and 17, and the age between 18 and 21. And these are all raw counts, so I'm going to select youth here and then normalize it by population 2000 so that I'm getting a percent of the total population in each one of these counties. The next thing I'm going to do is reduce the number of classes, because when we build a bivariate choropleth map, we're going to end up blending colors from both of our map layers, and it's a good idea to simplify the number of classes to three on each layer, so that in the end there are only nine different colors or tones that you can get when you blend the two together. Three times three is nine. So I'm going to change the number of classes to three here, and then I'm also going to look at how this data is classified. You can see it's got a pretty normal distribution to it. I'm going to change it to quantiles. So we'll essentially have three different classes that hold the same number of counties within each class. I'll click OK here and then OK. And so this map is showing the distribution of youth within the United States. And you can see that the dark red places are where there's a lot of young people and the lighter places are where there are, are, where there are fewer young people. So next we need to make another map layer that's exactly the same scale and shows the distribution of elderly people. So I'm just going to copy this U.S. counties layer and then paste it and then go into the properties for our new layer and change the field that we're symbolizing on to age 65 and up. We've still got the same number of classes, three, and I'm just going to come in and make sure that these are set to quantiles. So now again we're going to have the same number of counties within each of our three classes. Okay. And then I want to change the color ramp to a contrasting color, but one that will blend with the current color, in this case red, to produce a distinguishable tone that's in between. So in this case, if we add red with a color like blue, then the purples will show the areas where the two colors meet, and those are the places where we have high values of both elderly and young populations. So I'm going to change this color ramp to blue. It's a nice blue right there. I'll hit OK. And now if I turn off this top layer, you can see the distribution of elderly people, largely concentrated in the Great Plains, down here in the southwest, Florida, and Appalachia. So now I just need to export these two layers at the same time into an Illustrator file. And then when I bring this file up in Illustrator, you can see I've got a layer here for the distribution of youth within U.S. counties, and then also a layer for the distribution of elderly within U.S. counties. And then at the most basic level, all I need to do to make my map bivariate is select this top layer, go to my transparency panel, and make that first layer 50% opaque. And that way you'll be able to see through the red layer to the blue layer, and the two will blend together. So the places that are purple on this map are where you have both a high elderly and a high youth population. The places that are dominantly red are where there are more youth than elderly. And the places that are dominantly blue, they're more elderly than youth. The next step here is to make a legend that will help the reader interpret this information and interpret our color scheme. So to do that, I'm going to come back and make this top layer 100% opaque. And then we need to make something that's called either a strip legend or a lattice legend that will put each color series on an axis and then overlap them just like on the map so that the reader can see how these two color sets combine in order to create a bivariate scheme. So I'm going to come down into the corner here and then I'm going to come and just draw a rectangle and then I'm going to get out my transform toolbar so that I can assign the exact height and width of the rectangle. I'm going to turn on my rulers and then change the size of those rulers to inches just because that's the unit I'm more comfortable with. And then what I want to do is because we have a 3x3 three three grid that we're going to be building here, I want to make this rectangle exactly three times as wide as it is tall. So I'm going to make sure that the width here is let's say one and a half inches and the height can be 0.5 inches. And the transform toolbar is very handy for making those precise sizes. Then I'm going to take this rectangle, I'm going to turn on smart guides, and then I'm going to copy control C and then paste control V another rectangle right on top of it and then just drag it down copy and paste another one 
and then because my smart guides are on, I can line it right up with the edge of those previous rectangles. There's my first set of rectangles, and I'm going to use them to indicate the color scheme for the youth map, which is in red here. Now before I go on, I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup in my layers panel, just because I probably should have been thinking about this earlier anyway. I'm going to make a new layer that I'm going to drag all the way up to the top, and I'll call that Legend. And then I'm going to drag these paths that I just created into that new layer. So I'm not working in any of the existing layers. And then I'm just going to lock all of those existing layers that were my output from ArcMap. So now I've got my legend in a whole separate layer. And now I can just select that first rectangle and use the eyedropper tool over here on the toolbar to select the color from one of the dark red counties. Then I'm just going to repeat the process selecting that middle rectangle and I'll select a middle hue from that red map and then I'm going to select the lowest rectangle and go and select the lightest hue from that red map. So now we've got these strips that are showing the color gradient for this variable. Now we're going to copy and paste these rectangles. So I have Control C and then Control F to paste in place and then dragged over a copy of these strips. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other variable, the elderly population with the blue map. So I'm going to come back in here to my layers and turn off the red counties so I can see the blue counties. I'll lock that back up again so I don't screw it up while I'm working on the legend. And then with this top swatch selected, I'll come get the eyedropper tool, select a dark blue area, select the middle swatch, and get a medium blue area, and then select the bottom swatch, and get a very light blue area. So now we have two sets of swatches for each of our variables, and now we just need to rotate one of them and then place it on top of the other in order to create our lattice of swatches. So I'm going to select all three of these swatches and then just come get my rotate tool and holding shift so that it rotates in 45 degree increments, I'm just going to drag these around so that I've got my darkest swatch on the left and that goes towards the lightest on the right. And now because I've got smart guides turned on, I can come get my selection tool and just drag the edge of this path over until it snaps onto the edge of that other path. Now I just need to make these swatches semi-transparent so we can see through to the red swatches beneath. I'm going to come over and change the opacity to 50%. And now you can see that same combined symbology that we'll have on the map in our legend. And we can go ahead and label that legend. So I'm going to zoom back out here and turn the red counties back on and make those red counties semi-transparent. So there's 50% opacity. And now the map and the legend are coordinated. Lock those layers back up again. On our legend, I wasn't worried about the size originally. I just wanted to make sure the proportions were right. But the legend looks a little bit big, so I'm just going to select all of them. And holding shift to constrain proportions, I'm just going to drag them down so that it's a more reasonable size. And now, as I said, I can go about labeling the legend. So I'm going to zoom back in here. This first one is going to be for high elderly. Make that the right size. And then I'm just going to copy and paste as so well low elderly. And then we'll also have high youth. And low youth. I'll make both of those justified to the right. And then I'm just going to put those labels around my legend. And I'll rotate, holding shift, so I get it at a nice 45 degree angle. So I could probably use to spend a little bit more time on that legend, making sure that all my labels are aligned properly, and I might even add medium labels to that. But you get the idea. This is how you essentially build a choropleth map and then make a lattice legend in order to help your reader interpret what it means.